Welcome to On the Bubble Podcast, episode 57. I'm your host, Tsubasa J. Ueda, and with me is my co-host, Yuki Lee Bender. And this week, we're going to be talking about the other three heroes we didn't really touch on last week with our conversation with Darren. So we're going to be end up talking talking about Victor, we're going to talk about Reinar a little bit more, and we're going to talk about Olympia a little bit more in detail. This this episode is going to be sealed focused, uh, as Calling Hartford is coming up, and we're both going to be attending that. Honestly, we want to prepare ourselves the best we can to try and do well in that event. Absolutely. Before we get started and jump into our pre-releases and, and some of our thoughts on the format, I just want to shout out the Patreon, which has really kind of been taking off. Um, so thank you so much to everybody who has supported us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Really can't say thank you enough. And it's been really cool kind of seeing the um, the Discord popping off a bit. I think we're up to like f- just over 40 members in the Discord now. And people, you know, like it, it was like a little bit quiet early on. But I think now that the new sets out and everybody's really excited, there's a lot of discussion, a lot of people posting deck lists, and honestly, a lot of pretty good points in there. I've been enjoying reading the Discord and, and chatting with folks. And there's there's some there's some really good insights. I definitely learned some things about the format by by reading the Discord. So that's a really awesome thing that you get access to if you do decide to contribute to the to the patreon you can find us at patreon.com slash on the bobble and uh, it starts as low as two dollars a month so it's not too much to get in there if you're excited to have some people to discuss limited with and look at people's lists and see what's been working or or not working Mm -hmm. also if uh, you guys have any questions um like for those who are already subscribed to the Patreon, if you guys have any questions, you can. There is a tab that says Patreon questions. If you just type in your question there, we can um, answer your questions on the podcast. If you ask there, I'm meaning to make a post in there, but also just if you just have feedback, like, hey, can you read the card? Can you read like what the cards do a little bit more, or you know, like if there's something that we could be doing better, feel feel free to put it there as well, even if it's not, you know, a question. We we do appreciate that feedback. Okay. So I don't have too much to say about my week. I played a whole bunch of pre-release. I was in Dallas and I just got home yesterday. So it was a nice little vacation. I'm kind of like home very briefly, then back to Hartford. And yeah, mostly pre-release and travel, not not too much else to talk about. Have you been up to anything besides just the pre-releases? No, actually, I didn't even play that many pre-releases. I only got to go out to one of them. And it was luckily a five-round pre-release, so I got to play a bunch of games. I'm, I'm kind of broke right now. I had a bad poker week a week ago, so no money, no money. And then the, the trip's coming up. So, yep, uh, I'm going to be on a maximum budget. So <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. Uh, pre-releases do add up and are pretty pricey. Yeah, I think I got out to play three of them. I played... Kasai, Ko, and Victor, and kind of happy to talk a little bit about, about our pre-releases. Um, I don't know about you, Jay. I, I found that as I was playing my pre-release, a lot of the things that we talked about with Darren like made sense and checked out, and I think like a lot of things that we said in that episode were relevant. But one of the things that kind of struck me, especially after having played one or two times with the set, was that I actually think initially it looked like Kasai and Ko were sort of like the main heroes for sealed and as i've played more i i actually think that they're kind of just like all have pools that will push you into playing them and you can be successful with them um i I think that like kasai and like maybe ko come together probably the most but i also suspect that there was like maybe some guardian pools that be should should have been played that maybe weren't and also um perhaps some uh like olympia or reinar pools that are out there that are pretty compelling and pretty interesting so it's kind of what i was wanting to talk about today did you sort of like have similar feelings jay or you've been mostly focused on ko kasai i'm not convinced with guardian yet um i'm kind of excited to hear what you have to say about guardian but for ko i come to understand in sealed it actually i i was like putting reinhardt down a little bit but i think my ko deck would have ran better as a reinhardt deck and when when we start talking about brew i'll go into that a little bit more Mm -hmm. but i think overall ko is a stronger hero and if you can trigger any of his abilities, I think you should be playing it. In just my specific pool, I feel like maybe Reinhardt would have been better. I'll explain that when I come to that. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things that's kind of cool about this format is like, 
I don't think you get to play like the guardians. And I think there's certain characters that just like don't come together all the time, especially in sealed. But if you have the pool where they do come together and you do have the support, I actually think they can be quite strong. So that's sort of something that like, it was like a bit of a question mark I had going into the weekend and something I've been like pleasantly surprised by is just like how viable I think basically everything is honestly. If I wasn't in the mood at that at my pre-release to test out some theories with like KO, I should have been on a Guardian deck. Like my pool looked kind of linearly towards Guardians. Like when I first opened my packs and looked at other cards, I'm just like, wait, I just have like an insane Guardian deck. Um, but I decided not to play it just because I just had some questions regarding like KO and wild rides and just like how many agility tokens I need. There, there was more cards I wanted to test in in the brute pile than than in like a very standard guardian deck because I did have um, sh- a good time chapeau. I had a shield. I had a couple of um, guardian M's and. It's just like, I just had like a really insane guardian pool where if mm-hmm. it was the calling, I would have played guardian. Right. Um, but then I just wanted to try out some of the agility stuff with Brute at, at the pre-release. So I ended up doing that instead. Yeah, that, that makes a ton of sense. It's, it's always good to try things out. I was really excited to open the Victor pool that I opened where I was just like, if this isn't a Victor deck, then you don't play Victor in Sealed was like basically how I felt about it. So that was really good to like get to try it out and be like, oh, this was actually insane. I don't think you need necessarily all of these cards to be successful kind of a thing. Where do you want to start? Do you want to start Guardian, Brute? Those are kind of the two we've been talking about the most. Let's start Let's start Guardian. I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious on how you did, what, what, the, what your takeaway from your pre-release was. Yeah, so I played Victor on my third pre-release. There's, the deck is actually posted in the sealed, uh, on the bubble sealed. Uh, decks in the discord so if you want to take a look at that if you're on a computer feel free to the things that drew me into victor were pretty obvious i think i had test of strength as well as trounce um which are both gold they're both clash cards that when you block with them you um clash and then if you win you get gold trounce you have to win two clashes and if you do you get a gold a might and a vigor which is just completely busted when it happens the other big incentive was golden glare which is the victor specialization it's the two block blade break and then if you block with two yellows and golden glare all together you create a gold token which is which essentially means you draw a card because you're Victor. So like all of these are just like insane value plays. And I think that that's kind of like the biggest thing to be Victor is that you want some of these defensive gold cards. I I, I think like having like three felt really crazy. And I think like even two, I would be pretty interested in Victor. Outside of that, I think the equipment's pretty important. Like I have Vigor Girth, Gauntlets of Might, and Stand Ground, which is the, the, the boot, the Guardian boots that care about vigor and might tokens and i think that like having that extra armor to work with is like important in a lot of classes but it felt like especially important to some of guardians play patterns just for like taking late game pivots because i think that i think that guardian plays a little bit differently in this set than other sets where you're kind of like you're kind of like playing a lot of two card sevens so like that's kind of like what a lot of the backbone of this deck is is i just have like big attacks like i have like the wage mites wage vigors in red and i have like a wage gold in red which is a crazy card in victor because you can choose to wage the gold and if you win the wager you draw a card so all of that was like super super impressive i I think that like a lot of what you're doing is playing two card sevens and then you're trying to kind of like just like set up like a power play where you just like hit them for 10 or like 10 plus and it just puts them out of the game because of the low block values i was just finding that often like once you get people to like seven which like if they're not blocking is like two attacks like if you're throwing the three for sevens you attack them like twice and if they're just going no blocks like they're already in that range where if you can like find a spot where they don't have an agility play a big bop and then like arsenal a concuss and then in your next turn block three cards concuss for 11 it's just like that just like puts you completely out of the game because they usually can't even block 11 and like they'll leak some damage and it just kind of rips their whole turn and then you just like throw another three for seven on their next turn and they're just kind of like in a in like a really losing end game so i was finding like having that one aura was really really valuable because it let me kind of set up that play where i would arsenal the aura wait for them to not have an agility and like play out the aura and then i can keep like a one or two card hand and have like a big return and then just force them to be on defense um, and a lot of my games were playing out that way. In fact, most of them played out that way. Yeah, I think that's a good point. 
when I was playing, I I think both myself and my opponent, it felt like we didn't have that many three blocks, and there was a lot mm-hmm. of hands where you have like three two blocks in your hand, and you had to block with one of them to to use your hand the most effect like to maximize your hand. It honestly feels really bad as the one having to block with a two block, and it feels really good as the like playing against people with only two blocks, but. Attacking for six in this format feels kind of good, honestly. Yeah, it really does. Like, even, like, like going second, you start off by attacking them for seven, then you arsenal a three for seven, and you get to, like, block with three cards, return seven again. Like, that's a pretty good start for you, and it's nothing, like, super, super special. Um, the other thing that I found really interesting was, like, the way you use the tokens and set up the tokens in Guardian was quite interesting. I had a couple of the, like, one-cost non-attack buffs so i had like lead with power lead with heart so that's like the might and the vigor maker that give plus three and i also had a um i think i had like a money where your mouth is in yellow that was like also a one cost buff these are pretty nice because you can set them up with a like you can arsenal these potentially and then like pop this is why i was saying the equipment's really pop uh, important is you can like pop your vigor girth then you know on your next turn if you have like a three cost and a blue you can come in because of the vigor token you can like play out your arsenal which is the lead with power or whatever play a three for seven and now you're doing like a three card ten you've made like a might or a vigor token depending on the lead token and you can like probably just win your wager because if you like go like 10 wager a vigor like they just kind of can't block it yeah, they have to give you their whole hand and not do anything the next turn, or, you know, they need to have, like, one of the rare four blocks, essentially. Yeah, so that was really impressive. And the one costs actually work really, really well. If you ever get space, the one costs work really, really well with the um, with the gold, actually. Like, like the, the gold in Victor is just good, because when you make a gold, you draw a card, and that's insane. But then you can, like, the value doesn't even stop there. Like, if you go, like keep two blues and a lead with power you can like crack the gold draw a card you have one floating for your lead with power then you can either like swing your hammer and that's like a two card it's like essentially like a two card seven because you've drawn a card it's, it, it takes three cards but you've drawn a card that you can then arsenal then like that's pretty efficient you get like a token out of it or you can even throw it onto like a big attack so you can do that into like a concuss or a command respect and i found that disruption to just be like so backbreaking like when it's just like 10 on hit discard or destroy their arsenal it's like it's just so brutal in this format a question that i got was how relevant was victor goldmain's second ability which is the if you would lose a clash you can retry by spending a gold like were you ever doing that (laughs) it's really funny that you should mention this i had a moment of like coming back from pre-release and laying in bed and being like oh fuck victor has more text I could have, like, potentially tried to, like, win a trounce or something with a gold, and I just, like, completely didn't think about it. So I think that it, like, might come up here and there. The gold is, like, pretty good, but, like, maybe if it's somewhere particularly, like, essential, you you would use it. Would be Mm, kind of my guess. Okay. Oh, so you you did have a spot where maybe the trounce would have won and made you another gold and drew another card and made a might and a vigor token. Yeah, but I didn't think to bottom one of ours. I, I can't remember the exact. I think we like both whiffed or something, so I potentially could have like gone to my next card. Along the lines of these like one costs being pretty important, like I, I think the backbone of your deck is really like the, the three cost attacks. Um, the one costs are also really important. Um, so the, those buffs, and then sort of like right in the middle is um, I had it in yellow, but Rising Energy is a card that I think is pretty incredible in Victor a- and Olympia for that matter as well. This is the two for six that blocks two it's a garden guardian warrior hybrid and it says that it costs one less if you've drawn a card just like the baseline of like a two card six is fine like that's totally fine it's it's not quite as good as the two card sevens but it's like fine and then when you get the gold if you get to like keep a blue and this and you get to draw a card off the gold attack for six and it's like essentially like a one card six because you've drawn a card that's insane it's so good and I think part of what made this deck successful, like another kind of thing to look for in your guardian pool is that a lot of my attacks are these like uh, some some four power and especially like the five power attacks like I have mighty wind up, wage gold and in, in blue, vigorous wind up, wage might, those kinds of cards. If you just like random draw off the gold, it, 
because like you are playing one of these one costs and you arsenal like a five power, that's still totally fine because on your next turn, you can probably like block seven, throw five and you're like pretty happy with that. So yeah, I was finding it was like a lot of incremental advantage through the gold and setting up these big plays and often getting, often I'd be kind of like throwing three for sevens until my opponent gets to like seven-ish and then trying to set up a big play with either like a lead with or a big, uh, bigger than big, and then just like put that on top of a three for seven. And then just like, they, they have to give me like multiple cards and then they're just kind of like eating a big attack every single turn of the game. That's like how a lot of my games were playing out. And I think that just like lining up those vigors to go with your one for three buffs and then lining up the mites to go with your cost, your concusses and command respect are like a, a big thing that Guardian's trying to do. But it's often coming down to this pivot turn of like, my opponent doesn't have agility. Here's where I'm going to like either take a setup turn or take a pivot and just like hit them so hard that they have to like, because like if they're off their agility, if they have like four cards and they have no agility going into their turn, like they could have a wind up, but that turn's still like not going to be that threatening. And then you get to like either like play a big bop, they can't convert their hand, or if you can if you can afford to like potentially take some damage and just like hit them for 10, it's like really awkward because like they want to make an agility, but if you're like pressuring them too hard, they like can't actually make advantage. Like they can't take advantage of the agility. Like you usually need at least three cards to do the agility, like often four for it to be really good. You can kind of like exploit that, if that makes sense, by like lining up your disruption with like when they have the agility and lining up your setup with when they don't. I have some notes with the agility tokens to add to that. If you are the one with making the agility tokens there's a card uh the leg piece flat trackers it's the brute warrior equipment legs that can crack to make an agility i found that making an agility is almost always better than the blade break one but the important part is this isn't like snapdragon scalers where you get to look at your hand and then decide so sometimes if you activate your flat trackers and then you draw a dud hand that can't convert the agility it's kind of detrimental like it's almost like that would determine if you win or lose that game. Mm-hmm. What I found was you should make sure you just have an arsenal card before activating flat trackers. If it's a what whatever it is, it could just be like a yellow attack, a red attack. It doesn't really matter what it is in your arsenal, but if you have an arsenal card, it'll help you convert that agility token a little bit easier. And I made this mistake of like activating my flat trackers too early uh, without having an arsenal. Looking at my hand, being like, oh, I'm like, I can't actually convert this agility token. I just needed a card in Arsenal. And then, like, I could have went, like, attack f- with the card from Arsenal, then Manable Claws or something like that. Uh, because I had to, I had to block. Agility tokens and making an agility is like, if you have a choice to make an agility, just make sure you have ways to convert that agility. And, mm-hmm. and your opponent's goal would be to, stop you from using that agility efficiently so don't put yourself in the spot where you know you can't even convert your own agility even if your opponent doesn't disrupt you if that makes sense yeah because like i definitely know what you mean i was finding that as well that setting up the agility token with an arsenal is like pretty important because otherwise you have to kind of like keep four cards and they're not even necessarily like four cards that want to be played with the agility. Like you could draw into it, but you won't always. Whereas if you have the arsenal, it's so much more consistent. And that is that is sort of like the strength of the guardian disruption coming in is like like sometimes even just like like the concuss with a might token as like essentially like a one card play if it's arsenal is just like so potent into that. You know, you do the agility setup turn. Okay, I'm gonna block five, play this concuss for seven, disrupt your agility turn, arsenal another three for seven your agility turn is not that good that it can just hit you for seven again. And it's like suddenly like not that good for the brood or the warrior um, was sort of like a lot of what I was finding is like, if you can stop them from having those big turns and that's kind of like why the golden glare is so important is like, it kind of like lets you weather a, like a big turn. You don't always get to choose when you play it or like when you, when you get to cash it in, but just like having that plus value of like going plus a card and two block is like, so big for staying in the game golden glare seems like an insane card honestly all the specs i feel like they were all overperforming in mm-hmm. than than what i've expected yeah i would almost treat these cards as like you know when arcane rising was a set when you open like skull cap or like grasp of Arc knight and you're just like wow this is so good it's like it's that level of good like that's how good these specs are like that that's my opinion what do you think yuki 
Yeah, I think for the most part, they're pretty insane. The ones that block to, I think, are like universally, like just like really, really impressive. I think that like the Reinar one, that's like Battle Warren one, then you can draw just draw a random discard is like, okay, um, but like probably not quite as good. The the Kasai one is like, okay, like it's it's powerful, but it can be awkward to use and eating into your yellows like does take away from your hero ability like it's it's good you definitely always play it it is quite strong but it when i when i played with it it didn't impress me as much as like some of the other ones like golden glare and numbskull stood out more to me than the kasai and the reiner heads i think all the two block specs are close to legendary status the battle sworn for one is more of like in wtr like breaking scales was kind of an insane card it's like that level yeah yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So yeah, that's kind of like my experience with Victor. Honestly, like if I had my choice and I could open a pool like this for Hartford, like I would absolutely choose to. This was like the most fun that I had playing the pre-release. And it, a, a lot of it came down to just like, I felt like I had so much agency in my in my matches. I think I think the thing that Guardian gets to do that is like maybe not apparent is you get to run a lot of high power attacks that block three. The other classes don't really get to do this. Like, like Brute has like a fair number of attacks with block three, but they also have like some no blocks. So their average value is like lower on the blocks. And then the Warriors only have hybrid cards, which are the block twos. So like Guardian just gets to have these like three blocks that you're pretty happy to block with. But then like if you get left with your like yellow, if, if they don't hit you that hard and you like arsenal a yellow command respect, like you're you're fine with it. Like, you know, it's like. Yeah, sure. Do guard five. That's fine. Um, so you're kind of just like have this like density of like three block attacks and it just gives you a lot of flexibility, which is really, really powerful. Because I think that the attacks are like kind of like the better rate stuff we can talk about when we get to warrior, but the buffs are like a little tricky to get your value out of. One note that I had was um, I did play Reinhardt, uh, sorry, of KO into, who did I play into? An Olympia? It was Olympia. And we got into like a second cycle situation just like my brute cards that I was pitching just like happened to block three was just like so much more impactful. And then my opponent's pitch cards were all blocking for two. And I'm like, attack you with a manable claw. And the, you know, it rips two cards out of their hands. It mm-hmm. felt like attacking for four, like with Titan's fist, like back in the day that entails or something, you know, like it's like attacking for three with your weapon in this format was kind of more relevant than I think what we discussed in um, last week. I think so, yeah. And and something Guardian can do as well is like if you if you know your pitch well enough, you can like crack a gold to high riser for four and it doesn't come up that often, but like you can do that and you get guaranteed two cards. Um it's like a late like, gameplay if you haven't spent your gold elsewhere. But um but yeah, no, I totally agree that having the three blocks is really important. And I think one of the things that I started doing as like a quick evaluation of my sealed pools was if two decks look kind of close i would just count the three blocks and if one had significantly more three blocks i would lean that way i think it's like that relevant yeah i think so too like when we were talking about like i think two three weeks ago about getting ready for new sets and like making sure you have three blocks and three blocks being better it's really relevant here more so than in like uprising or sets like that yeah like if you have like a sealed pool where it's just like this deck's not exciting but it has like some like decent reds like it just like has some decent big attacks and i have like 16 three blocks out of my like 31 card deck or whatever it's like and i have a full set of armor like that is that is already very notable um because i think a lot of pools are playing like 12 to 13 three blocks and even just like going up to like 16 17 is like when your deck has it it's super super noticeable mostly if it's blue mostly if it's blue yeah yeah the the blue three blocks are so good holy (laughs) yeah yeah, I know they are really, really insane. So we kind of talked a bunch about Victor. Have you played against Betsy much? Do you have thoughts about Betsy? I, I kind of have thoughts about Betsy from playing with the uh, the Blitz precon for Betsy, actually, um, and also having played Victor, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts. I'm not, I don't really have that much to say about Betsy. I was kind of unimpressed, I think is the best way to say it. I was playing KO and I'm just attacking Betsy and then she just can't, she couldn't do anything, basically. I just like kept on coming in for like 13, then 14, then 13, then 10. And they just block, 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 come in back for three. And I'm like, I give you like a three block and, you know, convert my rest of my hand every turn. And then they just like 
Like, it, it, it didn't feel... The games didn't feel that close. There was one game where it was kind of close, and it was a game where I just had, an, like, an awful starting hand, and Betsy just came in for... B- Betsy went first, got the big bop on turn one, which is Guardian's, like, biggest strength, honestly. She came in for, like, 12 on turn... On her, like, on turn three of the game, which is her second turn. I just looked at my hand, and it was just like, all two blocks and a wild ride and i'm just like I, I, there's no way if i like block with one car my wild ride misses and like so many things can go wrong if i block i'm just like i had to eat the 12 went to eight on turn one of the game basically i still ended up winning that game because like i just like made an agility token every single turn and converted my hand every single turn to like a 14 damage hand where betsy kept on leaking damage and then only coming back for like a three or a four or like a seven but you know, seven's kind of easily blockable with my armors, and if I have like blockable hands, so like I converted my cards like significantly better than Betsy in like the next like eight or nine turns that was coming around. So I'm not exactly sure how Betsy is supposed to convert convert their hands in like the mid game, or like if that makes sense. Like I don't know how Betsy gets you to the point where her hero ability is relevant i i think that like i so i haven't played i've I've played the blitz deck for betsy um i haven't played it in sealed but i think that if you do what you're talking about where you just like roll agility tokens and you just have super high value turns i do think that she probably has a little trouble keeping up the armor is like helpful but it's it's a lot it's a lot to get through like all their all their health and they just hit you pretty hard and you also ideally you can block okay as guardian but like you're still not fantastic at blocking so i think that is like a real risk with betsy um and i think that overall like i'm probably like a little lower on betsy than i am with victor having having the gold just like helps you keep up with those turns and and i think is like a really solid plan into that with betsy i feel like you're probably relying more on that kind of like tempo swing turn that i was talking about where you like force them to block and you can just like present you're, you're almost doing like an Icelander, you know, where like in CC, um, Icelander would get you to like nine or something and the game's just kind of effectively over. It, it's almost like that, except you have to do it on your turn, uh, which is significantly weaker, but I think does have some real merit. And there are some there are some like pretty big plays that you can make like when you... Um, a lot of it is kind of like the small hands and the same stuff that I was talking about with Victor, where you're just playing like you're trying to get like a three card 10 with a concuss or something. And then you're trying to like leak some damage that way. But sometimes you can just kind of like close out the game. And I think in Betsy in particular, some of the expensive attacks are like surprisingly strong in the they're they're rares. But in the Blitz deck, I had they have like the five for nine. It's just like a it's a five for nine and it has some kind of smack of reality. It's a five for yeah, nine it... power. And if it has 13 or more power, it gets when it hits, destroy all aura tokens they created. Yeah, yeah, it's that card. I think I like Arsenal to Big Bop. I had like both of like the Vigor and the Might chess piece with the boots. And I waited until I saw that card and then I like cracked the Vigor and the Might and played out Big Bop. And then arsenal that card, so I had to keep like two cards in hand. And then on my next turn, I kept two blues and got to attack for like I think I like also got a might off a clash or something. So I got like plus two plus five, so it was like sixteen. Um, and because I had the vicar token, I could oh no, it was sixteen because of the Betsy is what it was. So it was like sixteen overpower on hit destroy your like agilities and mites, and it was just like the game was over. So I think that like. Like that was the thing that struck me. Like, like granted, that's like a blitz deck, and you're not always you're not always gonna have it. But like, Betsy could just end the game when the opponent's at like like I think that game like my opponent was at like twelve, and it was just over. Like it's just like, can you deal with sixteen overpower? No, you can't. You're just dead. I guess I should have mentioned like the game that I was talking about against Betsy with Brute. I kind of feel like I won the game mostly because I drew my blocks on the turn that they overpowered. So I actually yeah. got the block out like. You know, they came in for a nine overpowered. I'm like, I cover it. And they're like, oh, convert my hand again. <laughs> so I feel like Betsy is really good at closing the game, but your opponent still has some agency of like if they put yeah. in blocks in their deck or if they open in blocks or the reaction. Uh, reinforce, yeah, the reinforce and reinforce the lines and stuff like that. Like you can blow out Betsy just just doing that, honestly. 
Yeah, and and my guess with Betsy is like I think you're probably not activating Betsy very much. I think you're doing it like one to two times per game, and that's kind of it. I think a big trap with Betsy is trying to trying to do that too often. Like like what I was finding is like keeping two blues to go like wage gold concuss pay into overpower. You have like a four card ten with like the on hit, and you get a gold is like fine value wise like maybe pretty good but also just like if you can line it up with a vigor so it's just a three card nine like they, they still can't block the nine or not really do you know what i mean like it's it's like hard to block the nine yeah i think a easier way to like frame it would be betsy's ability is like essentially like betsy's ability essentially costs like a card right like yeah it's, it's hard to not use a card for betsy's ability so you're converting one card into one damage, essentially. Like, if you ignore the overpower portion of the ability, converting one card for one power is kind of, like, detrimental, right? Like, you can't do that ever in a game. Mm-hmm. Your cards block for two. That's just better than converting it into one damage. Yeah. yeah so, exactly. like, if you're doing that three times, like, you're devaluing your card by three. Like, you, man, we're talking about how, like, you know, a blade break one is kind of important. Like, if you're devaluing your cards by three, it, that's hard to come back from. So you can't actually use Betsy's ability as a value mechanic. It has to be to push damage. It has to be to end the game. There has to be a really good reason. Like, the on hit has to give you, like, minimum at two more value. And if it doesn't, then it's probably a mistake to use Betsy's ability. And then it's correct to use Betsy's ability if the on hit is going to give you like four or more resources like if it's either damage life token mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. like that yeah yeah it's it's i i agree with all of that it's just like hard to be on rate if you're playing into Betsy's ability it's mostly if you're like closing the game stranded with extra cards or uh turn zero turn zero playing out big bop is obviously really good but if you can like there if you can do like the nine over or ten over power with the money where your mouth is like that is pretty good that, that's game ending yeah that's yeah game yeah that's, <laughs> that, that that is like super good so like that's like the kind of funny thing about betsy is like when she goes first like in a non-zero amount of hands she just she just kind of kills you <laughs> like, <laughs> like she, she can kind of just win like even when you play the big bop and you like arsenal like a three cost attack and then you're like cool i get a block three cards come back at you with like i don't know like 11 with an on hit and i wager <laughs> it's just like all right like i don't know <laughs> how, how do i beat this yeah i think betsy has has its strength i feel like after talking with you about guardians I think you just need a really good pool one way or another, like either yeah. Victor or Betsy. Otherwise, I think I would still typically stay away from Guardian if possible. They yeah. just have this inherent weakness of the weapon costing one more and only attacking for three. It's it's hard to overcome that that portion. Yeah, the I really found that with Guardian was that like you don't really want to attack with the weapon much at all. You're really much more, especially because you have so many two blocks, like you you really are wanting to throw the three for sevens or like those cards with the on hits. Like that's, that really is what you're trying to do because just swinging three is like a little bit, like seven you can't really ignore. That's like a really big number. You throw seven three times and if they just don't block ever, they're dead, right? Like, like seven's a lot of damage, but like three is just such a slow clock that they can kind of just okay it just like hits you way too hard and if you just like try to block and turtle up like you're just gonna fatigue like you you get ahead in this format on cards by playing your cards because they're so much better on offense than defense and so guardian really wants to be like playing your big attacks and that means the three cost ones because some of the guardian ones like they block for three but then they're like a four cost seven power attack and it's just like this sure is pretty bad (laughs) i don't know (laughs) Like if like if you arsenal and you can line it up with like a vigor or something, like sure it's fine. But like you, you don't want to be pitching two cards into that. And I think that was like the biggest thing is you just like there, there's a lot of things you can do that are real bad value, and you need to just not do any of those things. Yeah, guardians. If you have a good pool, I think you should play it. Otherwise, I would 
I would, at least for the week one, week zero of this format, I would stay away for it. Yeah, I think I agree with all that. Like, my takeaway at the end of the day was, like, I think Guardian is quite good. And if I open a good Guardian pool, I would be, like, pretty excited to play it because I think that the play style is, like, fun and very stable. Yeah, I still think you're going to wind up Brooder Warrior most of the time. Then uh, you want to move on to Brutes? Yeah, so you were kind of talking about your KO deck, trying out some stuff with agility. I also played a KO deck. I went... 2-2 2-2 with that KO deck, and uh, man, that was some of the least fun I had playing this format. After <laughs> that after that night, I was just like, maybe this format sucks. <laughs> like, honestly, like, I, I was just like, this, this, this kind of sucks. Like, I don't, I don't know if I like this. Like, I, I died to, like, playing the KO mirror and getting hit for, like, 15 and having a card, a hand that, like, blocks four because I have, like, two two blocks and, like, two no blocks. Even though my deck only has, like, two or three no blocks in it, like, I just, like, draw them together with two two blocks and I just explode. That was frustrating. I felt like, like, one of the, I guess, like, some of my takeaways for KO is, like, and you can tell me if you agree with this, but I think that, like, the big upsides to being KO is like you get more consistency with the draw discard effects. So that's Wild Ride and Bear Fangs. And those cards are powerful, but like blocking zero is a super real cost. And it being random is a super real cost too, because sometimes you just miss. And like, that was like the other thing that happened was I, I think I had like a Bear Fangs with agility and just like the way my hand lined up, like I knew the top card was a red, I knew I had a blue in hand and like I felt like I had to go for a 50-50 because like the blue wasn't the blue wasn't a six. I really didn't want to discard it, but I'm like, I think I take the 50-50 here, it's, I think it's worth it. And I just missed and it was just like, my turn didn't end, but it was like, I ended up doing like Bear Fangs for six into like a Clash of Might from my arsenal for six. Oh, that's so much better than my turn. I'll, I'll tell you about my turn later. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, but, but I just mean like the the delta between that and then like the, the the other alternative was attacking for eight with the bear fangs, making a might, getting a claw swing in there, and getting in for six more. So you're just like talking about like a six point, like a five point differential on the might tokens. That's just like six points on that turn, like just off of the fifty fifty. And I found that like pretty frustrating. Um, just like that there was like such a big swing there so i think that ko is like super powerful and when he does its thing it's like super good but like there's there's like variance in that and there's variance in having those zero blocks and like just as much as you can kind of run people over i think you can really get punished by your deck for having these cards in it yeah no i completely agree so for my wild ride turn after counting all my pitch and my discard and just knowing what's left in my deck I have 18 cards left in my deck of which i drew almost all my non sixes so the rest of the cards that was unknown to me there was 18 cards of which i think four were misses and then i have a six power in my hand so i decided that i think this is an insane spot to go for a wild ride if i hit on the wild ride i make a might token gets go again i can attack with a manable clause and depending on the color of the pitch i draw i can come in for like a two for six or two for seven or like it's just depending on what i draw i can convert more cards i go for it and then i draw my lunging press and then my opponent chooses the lunging press so then it gets discarded and i'm like hmm this turn was a two for six yeah i have a card left in my arsenal and i have a card in my hand pass draw three i lose this game yeah 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 so like i think on average i'm always supposed to go for that play because like i'm like uh at the beginning of the turn when i decide to go for the wild ride play i'm like 95 percent to get the go again or something like that but the five percent of the time you miss it it kind of hurts really bad and it happened and i was just like well this game is like absolutely completely unwinnable now yeah because i came in for six instead of like a 16 plus a might token and uh, yeah no that's 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 11 points difference so (laughs) yeah it is pretty brutal and i almost wound up feeling like if i had my choice and i could build a brute deck i would want it to have less of the wild ride especially wild ride bear fangs is like a little more acceptable because like you can often like end on a bear fangs and then if it misses and comes in for six it's like okay it's fine it's still okay like whatever you play two cards for six okay you could do a lot worse but like when you hit you actually do like a a significant amount Mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. yeah so i don't know i i think that like be careful with how many of those you play especially as you start to get into like the yellows uh like the yellow wild rides are just like 
I don't really want them in my deck. I also had like a blue wild ride. And I was like, this is like fine to have like one blue wild ride, like one red wild ride and like one bear fangs, right? Like surely, surely that's fine. And it just kept killing me. Like it killed me two in two games. And it's just because I was just like, well, like it's like a blue that can get go again. I can be like four go again. Like oh, that's pretty solid for a blue. And then it was just like, no, like this card, <laughs> this card is not not worth it <laughs> you want to know my hot take of this format what's that i think red wild ride sucks like i think it's just a bad card in this format like i, I would i don't know about in draft for reinar but at least for sealed in ko i would not want to play any wild rides i don't care what color it is just like i would play the red one because i have to because it's sealed and i don't have a choice but if I see a wild ride, it's going into the mediocre pile immediately. It's like it's not it's not a card where I'm like, oh, because I have like three red wild rides or two red wild rides makes me want to go KO. No, 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 no. It's it's the opposite. Like I see too many wild rides, it's just like I'm going I wanna I'm gonna go warrior. Like it's it's like Yeah. I think wild ride sucks. Like that's that's my hot take of this format. <laughs> I, I think I think I'm not quite there. Like, I think Wild Ride is, like, powerful, but I just think it's also really high variance and, like, kind of a card I want to avoid. Is it even powerful? Like... It can lead to powerful turns. It's just so hard. Like... It doesn't really lead to powerful turns. Like, you know what I ended up doing instead for the rest of the the event? If if you get to, like, Wild Ride Claw 2 cost, it's really good. It's just... It's just so hard to do. Yeah, no, but you know... You know... You can do that... You can do that without Wild Ride. You just... You make an agility token. Yeah, and then literally what I was doing was I was like, okay, I'm going to make an agility. So then my wild ride has go again no matter what I discard. And then <laughs> if I hit, that my manable claw gets go again. Like, that was the upside on, on wild ride was that it gave manable claw co- go again and make a might token if you randomly discard the six. Right, not the go again. The go again was completely irrelevant. Like, every single mm-hmm. time after mm-hmm. I missed on that wild ride, I was like, make an agility. Okay, now that I have an agility, I can wild ride. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this was really relevant because my deck had a unusually large number of misses. What ended up happening was my deck kind of sucked at being KO. Like, on a typical game, I made like maybe one or two might tokens with KO. Yeah, and that's that's the interesting thing, right? Is that like, if you don't have that much of this draw random discard, like, being KO doesn't do that much for you and like the beat chest stuff like you can do it and sometimes you do it but it doesn't come up all that often and you can still do beat chest stuff with reinar because it's not random so like you can set it up and i think the intimidate's pretty good um so like i think the big reasons to be ko is like wild ride but i think we both like don't love that card bear fangs but you can also just kind of play it in reinar and then uh i think the other like big get for ko is like you get to play a bunch of blue quote unquote sixes but again like why does that matter it matters for the wild rides and bear fangs and then it matters for the blue windups i think the blue windups are especially like the blue uh agile windup is like a really good card and you can still play it in reiner it's just when you get the extra might token that is pretty big so i don't have that card and as i was saying earlier in the episode i think i should have been in reinhar and the biggest reason would be not for its hero ability but well, technically it's a hero ability, is it? It he has two hands. And yeah. I had a um a shield, a bloody oval. I should have just played bloody oval instead of KO, and then my deck would have been more consistent. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I also think like agility token weapon weapon is like fine. Like it's 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 totally fine. You can potentially get like a red to the bottom of your deck for second cycle. I don't know if that's good enough. I I would say that that's that's not a winning strategy for no. using your agility tokens. In like a pinch, it might be okay, but like to swing two manable claws, it still like kind of requires two cards. So you really need to have agility. Like I think my deck was extra good at making agility tokens two wage agilities uh two lead the speeds just the trackers and yellow wage agility blue wage agility i had one other way to make an agility token yeah i i I think that the agilities are super strong and reiner can do a lot of the agilities and i think and i think like we were talking about with Guardian, we're just like sending the big attack and like kind of like closing the game or forcing him into an end game when it's on your terms. I think I think Reinar can do kind of the same thing. 
Like if you get to like play the 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 one for three buff that you can beat chest to make it plus two. If you get to like play that and come in with like a two for six and you're like eleven intimidate, like no, no, no. You know what? They're at like they're at like t- sub ten. Like that's that's really threatening. I think that's my other hot take of this format. Uh, Bone Breaker Bellow is a card you're talking about, mm-hmm. and I had three red ones in my deck. Um, in my sealed, I thought that card kind of sucked. Like it's. It's so hard to convert that card. It's just like it the best part about that card every time I had it in my hand was I was like, "Hmm, how do I use my hand?" I block for 3 with this bellow and then come in for 14 with the agility token cuz with two sevens or like 13. Yeah. It's just like the card is so much better as a 3 block than it is playing it. Cuz like every single time I'm like thinking about how to convert this card, I'm just like, "I can't convert this card. I arsenal it." Okay, it got stuck there for two turns. Hmm, this is bad. Should have blocked with it. Was like every single time I arsenal it, that's that that was going through my head. It's like should have blocked with this card. Why didn't I block with this card? This card is not actually that good in arsenal. And then I'm like, yeah, Bonebreaker Bellow was kept on coming up as like, uh, I should have blocked with this card. I, I think you primarily do, and I think you primarily play it as like a block three. But I think that like especially in draft or like if your sealed pool supports it, I. I, I kind of feel like having Bonebreaker Bellow in combination with like Pack Hunt or the two for six beat chest Intimidate, where if you can like potentially line up, it's like a four card 11. You spend one on the Bonebreaker Bellow, you discard to it, then you spend the two floating on the um, the attack. It's like four card 11 double Intimidate will end a lot of games. And I think... I think just like in how like Guardian can kind of like end the game a little early, I think that like Reiner has some of that going on as well. So I think that's kind of like my guess as to like, I think like Reiner, you're doing like agility stuff, you're doing like the big attacks and you're just like playing mid range and then you can just kind of like close the game with Intimidate. You know the problem with that line you just, you're talking about? What's that? Like that's like a pitch stack scenario, right? Like you can't actually do that first cycle it's really hard to set that up first cycle because uh, no it's you, not no no let, let, let's let's think about it right because like let's say you do that four card 11 double intimidate like in the early game, early stage of the game you're hitting them for six but like they get two cards back and depending on what those two cards are they're just com- coming back at you for like a six or a five or just like a reasonable reasonable amount of damage right like yeah yeah so, so like what you what you just explained to me was you did a four card eleven. That's not a winning strategy, is it? No, like I I think you do it. I think that it's something you can do when once they're low to end the game. So you just have to naturally draw it, but like that's not reliable, right? So uh, we- I, I I think it is. Like I think if you have like a couple bone breaker bellows and you have like a couple of these like two cost intimidates, like you can arsenal one piece and then just wait until you draw into the other piece. And all you need is blue, that, and a six. Like it's not that hard to draw. Into yeah, that. yeah. So you need to draw a blue, a bone breaker bellow, a pack hunt or the other rare, and a six power. Yeah, but you gotta arsenal either the pack hunt or the bone breaker bellow. I feel like the line that you're mentioning here is like kind of like a dream scenario situation and nah. it's not even like it's not even that good like that's 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 the thing like you're doing you're you're paying all these costs and you're doing like a slightly above average turn it's like it's not it's not actually that good right like yeah like i don't i don't think you're going out of your way to play towards it i just think it's like a way to end the game and i think i don't know i, I feel like maybe this is just like a place like my play style or something but i feel like i'm often playing towards It's like one of my favorite things about limited is I feel like you can play towards these like specific setups and it's like maybe you're not doing this every game, but I think that like I think you might like wind up in a spot where you can like be like we're like halfway through our decks and the game's getting kind of to that point. Here's a pack hunt. I can arsenal it and wait until I and like try and wait until I draw a bone breaker bellow and just like like I I think it's fine. Imagine you do that and then you're playing against like the KO mirror and they just like hit you for 12 or something like you can't keep your hand like it's I, I just have a feeling that like the the scenario that you're cooking up is like it's decent and if it does work or if it's like if you naturally draw and your opponent's at like five it's it's amazing like you just your opponent's dead like you know like they're just yeah. straight dead but you know your imagine your opponent's at 10 or something and you draw that and you're like okay do this and then they just come back at you for seven and you're just like 
like you, it didn't actually accomplish anything, right? Like it's it's just like so mediocre in so many. They situations. may not be able to attack you back for seven when you have like the when you have the intimidate though. Like ah, if they have one arsenal, it's that's that's pretty easy to convert. Like I guess so. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I think I don't think it's like how you pull ahead in the game or anything. I just think it's like... It's like, it's like a Betsy. Yeah, I think it is. I think it is like a Betsy. But I, I think I also think that having the ability to potentially close the game early is like something that I've been noticing that is strong in this format. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Like like Warriors kind of have this with the reactions. I think Reiner can do it with Intimidate. And I think that like Betsy can do it with Overpower like we talked about. And even like Victor can kind of do it with like just like Big Bop into... 12 view and it's like doesn't literally end the game but it like kind of does um so i think it's like i've been feeling like that's a thing in this format that like doesn't come up every game you don't need to like don't like waste a bunch of efficiency to do it but like you know pay attention to what's left in your deck and i think sometimes you will like wind up in a spot where you can set up some sort of intimidate kill that is actually pretty good now that you're talking about this you know a card that's just like so much easier to set up than the four card combos just play a down but not out you know just open that card and play that card that's, that's gonna be like my number one card i want to open just like a yeah. red down but not out and just have like that out of like oh i'm slightly behind eight overpower on hit makes everything and you just win the game if it hits yeah down but not out was like insane in my sealed pool i actually had the trackers the arm piece that makes the might and the raw meats, uh, mm-hmm. but I didn't have a spec headpiece. But I did ha- open face adversary, adversity. It's the uh, headpiece that has blade break um, two, and it can only be blocked if uh, your opponent your opponent's drawn a card. I actually opted not to play this card against someone like Betsy, just because if my opponent has down but not out, and I get stranded with this card i lose like it's against a lot of heroes where i knew they they might not draw i just like decided like opted not to play the blade break so then i was one equipment down and then i can blade break all the all the rest of it and it was actually kind of relevant yeah i think i agree with all that i was i was actively trying to get my equipment out of the way so that i didn't die to this card or if you have the card so that you can play towards having it online because i I also had it in my deck so i wanted to make sure that i can get rid of it it was also a big card yeah i was finding if you have the two like token maker equipments with the temper two whatever the third piece is depending on your class cashing in like both of the equipments at the same time so you got the guaranteed two block on your temper two was just like i did it all the time like it was a thing i did so much of do you know the other thing about that is? Is it leads nicely into your next turn because you want to keep cards in your hand. Exactly. Yeah, it kind of lets you like set up a play where you have like some good stuff and then you get to like make a power play off of it. So you can like set up your agility and might turn. You can set up your... Like in Guardian, you could just like arsenal one for three buff and like go into that and you have some extra blocks that you can like keep a blue and a, an attack and then just have this like super efficient turn. And I, I felt like... I felt like basically like all the classes are trying to if you have those if you have that set of three equipment, it's really powerful and you can set up some pretty powerful stuff with it. Okay. Anything else about brute? No, I think I think brute's power comes from their class cards attacking for six. So it converts agility tokens very, very easily. Mm-hmm. I feel like the all of the power from Brutes is going to come from how consistently you can make one agility every single turn. And then the the better you are at doing that, the more incentive you have of playing Brute. The way you lose games with Brute, I feel, will be if your opponent can prevent agility tokens or if your opponent can prevent you from having hands um, when you have agility. But easy way to fix that is just always have an agility token every single turn you know opponent can't disrupt you every single turn it's true i'm curious to see how draft will evolve because i feel like a lot of people like everybody that i listen to is really high on agilities they're really strong i think it makes a ton of sense but like i wonder how it will play out in draft if like if the agilities are like super contested yeah i heard some people like i heard like a couple people not sure how reliable it is but i heard some people mentioning that they felt like Sometimes like the Kassai and KOs were like almost weaker than in sealed because you actually just like didn't 
you, you like there was like a lot of pods where you just couldn't get as much agility as you might in an average seal pool, which I thought was interesting. So that is interesting. I haven't drafted yet of the set. I'm Same. kind of excited to go to Hartford a uh, day early to be able to draft once or twice. I'm really was hoping that I could do that, but I can't. Um, I might try and do a draft like maybe tonight. Maybe I try to do an online draft or two. But yeah. Okay. Let's talk about Warrior. So last week we kind of talked about Kasai a whole lot. Um, we talked about how we kind of thought that she was like the default warrior. I think that she probably does come together more often than Olympia. But one of the things that became apparent to me is it, it was kind of the same thing as like the 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 chaos the KO realization where there's like there's just like matchups where like KO like there's there's pools where like you're not getting effect out of being KO and it's just like well why am I KO I could just be Reiner sort of similar with with Kasai I think that like. So her hero ability is like all centered around the weapon and you kind of like need to be able to draw cards in order to get the cost reduction, which could just be like gold generation and you get some of that from your yellows. So it's like not that hard to turn on, but you do want some of that. Like draw swords is I think a pretty decent Kasai card, like one of the bigger reasons to be Kasai. And then the other thing that you need for those turns to be any good at all really is agilities. I was finding that like sometimes warrior can have this problem of like, like a lot of the one for three buffs like edge ahead and and all of those are really weird because like assuming that you don't have a gold or anything assuming you don't have any like card draw or anything like that a saber is like a one card two not very good if you have like one of those like edge aheads or something you can play like a two card five but like there's a bunch of two card sevens just in the set so it's like pretty bad even if you can wager like like wagering an agility on a two card five is like you can't really do it and so like the only way to really be on rate is if you have an agility token because then you get the follow-up swing and then it's like a two card seven and like yeah like the sabers give you some extra value if they try to block with attacks so like there's there's something there but like i don't know it's like you need the agility token to be on rate and then even then you're just like on rate but then if you just play the big attack you're like have like the same rate and you don't need the jelly token so it's like kind of weird with these one for three buffs and i think that like you can wind up in this trap of just like having too many of them and it's like and it doesn't get better if you have more cards right like if you're if you're just like well now i have two buffs and i swing a sword so now i have a three card eight it's just like okay <laughs> sure don't i don't really care draw swords feels like a notable exception because you like go up a card on it so it's like kind of like a one card five um and it's like more acceptable but like yeah, I don't know. Kasai is weird. You kind of like need to get up, get back the value with her like card draw off of the gold and swinging the sabers. And like, I think that she can be good. And I think that she does come together. But like, I think that there's like a fair number of pools that people just like play as Kasai and they win and they're like, Kasai is so great. But it's really just like Warrior is pretty strong. And you, some of those pools should just like maybe be Olympia. The, I think all the power from Warrior comes from like the same thing how Dory was powerful in WTR. Where yep. the attack reactions is almost like an unblockable source of damage. Mm -hmm. That might be like the best way to just close games. So I'm not sure how good and I I'm not I'm not too sold on if you should be playing Klasai or Olympia. I'm not exactly sure which hero is gonna be better. But what I think is like you really do wanna still base around your deck off these attack reactions because they're basically unblockable damage. And if you can ever put your opponent in a fork situation where it's a lose lose situation for them, then these one for threes attack reactions essentially look like one for sixes, which is a one for six is kind of unbeatable. Yeah, I think for yeah, I think for Kasai, you you really want the agilities, you want the card draw, and you can use some of the attack reactions to help push that stuff over. But I think that like I think you can also wind up with like a warrior deck that like doesn't doesn't have quite as much agility but you have like more big attacks and you still have attack reactions like especially take the upper hand i know it's a rare but like that's like a big reason like it's just a good card but like i think if you have like i played against a sealed pool that had like i think two take the upper hands and then like a bunch of like the seven power red wages and it was just like so gross because they can just like wage seven and it's like i kind of can't block it like if i block it and they just like take the upper hand me I get so blown out. But if I don't block it, it's not great either. And then if they have like a Vigor token, their one for three buffs kind of fill the same role. Um, so that was like pretty powerful. And also like Olympia making gold. Like I think Olympia is kind of like more of the Vigor hero because you like want the big attacks and then the Vigors pay for your reactions to push the big attacks with Wager over and then you get golds. And like the other thing is like Vigor and gold have synergy because 
if you have like a vigor and a blue and two gold, that is like a full extra card. And similarly, if you ever wind up with two vigor and a gold, that's like also a full extra card. So I kind of feel like there's this like synergy between vigor and gold that's like not necessarily super apparent right away, but is there and can help grind value. And if you're basically like, if you're playing Kasai and that hero ability isn't doing much for you, I do think that like Olympia's hero ability is potentially giving you some pretty decent value is kind of like where I'm at. Like if most of what your deck is doing is like playing big wagers with like attack reactions and you have like a little bit of agility, like that's probably more of an Olympia deck. Whereas if you're have a bunch of agilities and you can keep making use of like Kasai's free um Free weapon swings, the gold generation from her, um, from her hero ability, and all that. Then, like, yeah, you can have a good Kasai deck. But I don't think it's like so clear cut as like don't play Olympia. I think the better Kasai decks actually end up tending to be the ones with like the seven power attacks as well. Then, then just the ones that are trying to focus on attack reaction and attacking with smaller stuff. This format feels like you have to be on rate or slightly above rate when attacking. And if you are ever below that, you're kind of... You're going to fall behind pretty quickly, I think. Yeah, because you the, the cards are so bad at blocking that you don't really want to like be stuck in a position where you need to block. And and honestly, like the other nice thing about the big attacks is like you can do all this cute stuff with your agility token to like play your one for three buff and then like get two sword swings and then you have like a two card seven with like some sort of evasion ish because of the centauri sabers and like that's all fine and well but also just like if you have an agility token and you ever get to go like seven seven it's just so painful like it's really good yeah it, it really is that's what brute does <laughs> yeah yeah and i think that that's like kind of what you want to be doing i don't know and not even just that like you can go seven seven and if you wager either of them and then have an attack reaction or something it's it's you just win right like you just straight up win because like they can't yeah. they're you just basically fork them and yeah, yeah. It, it's kind of gross like the moment you have an agility two at real attacks plus an attack reaction that can like pump over a wagered attack or something like that like that's really hard to come back from no matter what hero you're playing you know like it's just your opponent does that to you you're kind of dead that's kind of my thoughts about warrior you want the big attacks which kind of leads us to like we've kind of talked about most of what we want to talk about the different classes and like especially the ones we didn't touch on the first week and i I think that this sealed format's pretty interesting because even if there is like kind of like a more common or like like i still think you're probably going to wind up with like warrior brute more often than not um often because i i'm sort of interested about ko reinar i think it might get closer as time goes on but i I think you probably end up ko like slightly more often that wouldn't surprise me it feels like there's reasons to be all of these heroes and that's honestly pretty cool and i think if you have a good grasp of each of them and like when to be them and what the incentives are you probably get quite a big advantage out of that Kale's biggest upside is you win clashes. It's huge that it's it gets it gives you plus one. It's 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 it, it, that could be worth like two or three points. I I kind of want to so I want to talk about some sort of like I have a couple like hot takes or like big picture things about the format that I want to talk about. I'm glad that you brought up clash because that is one of them. Clash scares me, and maybe I'm just scarred because I think I went like two for ten in my clashes of across like pre release. Like I, I lost a lot of clashes. Um, sometimes even like in a KO deck where I felt like I should have won on average, but then like sometimes you just lose. Clash with Might is like fine. The agility classes clashes are like very scary cards that I don't even know if I want to include in my deck is like almost where I'm at because I've been in situations where like you're low and you just you just have to block because it's a three block and like you like you just die like you don't block it you die but then you just give them an agility token if you lose the clash and you just like completely bury yourself you know what's really funny about that card if you block with clash of agility that also means you've blocked that turn and you make an agility token and you can't convert your agility token even if you win yeah it's really hard to convert so like i don't know those cards are like like when it goes bad it just loses you the game and when it goes good, it doesn't even win you the game. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty hard. Like maybe if you have an arsenal and you can like block one card, get an agility, then go like seven seven, like we were talking about, like two big attacks. That's pretty good. But like just just in, like in not being a May is so brutal. 
it's like it's like so bad for you. And and I think Vickers, like it depends a bit on the class, but like Vickers can also be really scary. Like if Brood has like if like Brood ever has like an agility token and you like potentially can give them like a Vigor, like it, it's really bad because they can do like a big attack into like the one floating resource for like a second big attack or like a claw. Like there, there's like enough two cost things that they can do like two cost, two cost or two cost claw. And like all of that is terrible for you. <laughs> yeah, that is super bad. But I think I think that Vigor is a lot tamer yeah so is the might might is significantly tamer yeah it's like giving your opponent a might token basically made your clash block for two instead which is not the worst yeah especially because like you have the upside of it like blocking for four essentially because yeah. if you get the might tokens I, th- I think as long as like yeah i agree I'm, I'm like pretty happy to clash the mites the vigors are like relatively acceptable especially if you feel like your deck uses vigors particularly well like i think if you're like a guardian deck and you have some one for three buffs and you like have a clash of vigor that's pretty sweet because if you like arsenal a buff and you win the clash you're like pretty set i think you can play them but the the agility clashes in particular are like i don't even know if i want them in my deck they're even though they block three, I don't know if I want them in my deck. That's fair. Ah, ugh, it, still it's block tough. threes though. The the red the reds are a lot more acceptable because you can play them out. But like some of the other ones, like oh man, like you just like wind up with these hands where you're just like, do I block with my blue block three and potentially just screw myself, or do I block with my blue block two and then just pitch the blue block three and hope that like it doesn't screw me in the end game. <laughs> It's I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know. It's, it's it's close. It's interesting. Like those cards are such interesting design that it's yeah. like I think you know t- only time will tell kind of thing. But you know what? The clash with agility. I do agree with you. Oh, that card can be so bad sometimes. Yeah. What's really funny you mentioned this is one of my games. My opponent blocked with a uh, clash of might. Yeah. And I won because I'm playing KO. I won the clash. And then on my next turn, I'm just like, I pop my four might tokens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. That, like, I have four might because I discarded off KO, used my gauntlet, I won the clash, and I got one more might some other way. I forgot how, but like, <laughs> it's just like, I have plus four on my next attack. With my agility, I attack you with mana bull claw for seven. <laughs> yeah yeah like that's my first thing i'm doing this turn <laughs> yeah the the might stacking is is pretty crazy sometimes it's definitely really strong whereas all the other tokens don't stack well uh ah, vigor stacks kind of well but yeah agility stacks really badly yeah vigor vigor stacks real well if you have gold as well which like a lot of them do like olympia and kasai sort of get gold like relatively freely victor you're like probably making gold otherwise i don't know why you're victor yeah, I, I think that that was like a big thing was like the gold vigor synergy is like pretty real and having like some payoffs, some small payoffs for your gold, I think is like also pretty real because you, you can get quite a bit of value out of it if you if you have cards to support it. Other big takeaway, I think it may, might kind of go without saying based on like everything that we said with all, with all the decks, but like the big attacks are really good. I think I think they might just be like some of the best cards in the set. I think in draft, like, I don't know about you, outside of, like, some, like, real sweet equipment or, like, maybe, like, lead with speed, the big seven, like, the big three for sevens might be, like, next for me. I... I haven't drafted it, but, like, my speculation is just, like, I think if your deck has a bunch of the three for sevens, like, your deck's going to be much better than if it doesn't. And I think that, like, I just feel like every hero, we're just, like, yeah, attacking for seven off two cards is really good. (laughs) <laughs> you know like yeah you just yeah. keep coming back to it and i just think that like if you like if you just like like i'm i'm i think going into the weekend if i don't get to practice or anything my assumption is going to be that i should be trying to get a bunch of these two card sevens and then filling out the rest of my deck from there but just like picking those up when i can especially like i just feel like they're also premium like the wages are so good because you like you get to like choose to have this like on hit or like force them to block their hand and they can't, can't use the wager i don't know i think it's pretty strong i generally agree with you i'm i just have like the better like the four blocks higher than that for sure yeah yeah there might be some rares and stuff but like as far as the commons i might be prioritizing just like class card three blocks a little bit more as well it's just like 
three blocks seem so scarce in this format that like if you just take up all the three blocks and then strand other people with two blocks you might just win off that yeah it's it's interesting there's there's gonna be a bunch of different draft strategies i want to try out and hopefully i can get something solidified this weekend but we'll see Honestly, I'm kind of excited for week zero drafting. And I know not that many people is going to have, you know, more than 10 drafts in. So yeah, I'm definitely pretty excited too. And I, I agree with you. Three three blocks are also way up there for me. Yeah. Big attacks. Big attacks real good. Three for seven. Especially if, they make, especially if they make agilities. But honestly, they're all good. They're all good. Th- that's kind of it that I have as far as like big picture stuff that stood out to me. Anything else you want to add before we close out the episode? I don't think so. I think that's pretty much everything for me. Overall, how are you liking this set, Jay? It's okay. It's fine. It's good. It feels like WTR draft, or sorry, WTR sealed, honestly. It's good. You know, WTR is a good set. Yeah, it does have some WTR feel to it for sure. I think it's a little different. I think the two blocks do make it feel quite, quite different. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I was like, sort of like, I was excited about the set. Then I played it and I was like, I don't know. Not sure about all this variance. And then I played Guardian and I was like, oh, this set's great. So I don't know. Overall, I think this set's pretty fun. I'm excited to draft it, especially. But I think it's I think it might be the best sealed format that we have. Just on the basis of like, I can imagine being pretty happy playing any of these heroes if I have like the pool for it. Whereas I feel like a lot of sealed formats, there's just like usually like at least one hero, if not multiple, where like you're usually like you're just not really gonna play that hero i'm I'm not ready to say this is the best deal format yet i kind of need to get blown out by a ko a couple more times and then i'll (laughs) make the decision like if like ko warrior keeps blowing me out and i feel like there was like no plays i could have made to beat it my evaluation of this format's gonna go way down uh but if the format's a lot more consistent and feel like oh like i lose because of a misplay then that would typically make my ranking for sealed go up or if it's more skill based that makes a lot of sense yeah, yeah. i hate getting grand rng to death bro i hate it there there is like a fair bit of there's definitely more variance in this format than in previous formats and i think it is intentional and you it's flavorful it's flavorful and you definitely feel it like it's it's like kind of fun it's like intense you're like like when you have like the the clash and you know it's like really important clash it's like no nah, it's exciting he, yuki yuki you just gotta memorize you just gotta know like i was playing against vetsy second cycle with my ko deck and i'm just like clash i win this clash clash i win this clash clash i win this clash and just like won like five clashes in a row and i won the game yeah you just gotta it's just gonna be like oh Not this my 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 four power rawhide rumble was good here so i'm gonna re- i'm gonna clash and reveal it it's good you know, you just gotta know. Or like when you crack the gold, so then you draw your low power card and then you clash with the card underneath. It's true. You just gotta know. <laughs> you know the worst part was I I had the one or two hands where I drew multiple clash cards and I lost and I was just like, I still have to block with the second card, even though I know <laughs> I lose again, because I can't not block. It's <laughs> just like <sighs> Oh, do you know do you know a situation where what made me not mad but kind of really disappointed i had a block card in my hand and i'm playing against olympia i think it was like turn two of the game or something like that i draw a nutted hand the what is that called? rare called down but not out mm-hmm. i had an agility and a might token with her uh, on my board already and uh, i didn't start with the headpiece uh so i'm already down on equipment the card that I have to block with or like a dead card in my hand that I'm blocking with is a block card. And I was so sad when my opponent played the attack reaction that gave a, a vigor token or something um, if they block with an attack action card. Mm, and mm-hmm. that was the only card they played that could have made a token. Yeah. And I'm like, no, my opponent didn't make a token this turn. <laughs> I could have blown them out so hard if my card was just an attack action. It could have blocked for zero and I would have won this game. Yeah, I've seen opponents do that with wagers too. Try to get me to like block it so they can win the wager and then... oh, You just let them hit, you know? And you win the game with down button not out. It's true. Oh man, down button not out is, is so gross. The best part about this card is it blocks for three. It's just like... Yeah, why does it block? <laughs> well, I, I think I know why, but... I don't know why. What? It's... 
And this card is broken. They probably want it. It was probably like planted as like a CC staple. It's probably why it's a rare. But like, what? I don't think wage is like good enough in CC at the moment. But I think that is the idea behind the card. This card's broken in this format. Like, it's real good. Yeah, it is. It is insane. It's like format warping good. Like, it's like you have to make pre-game decisions about this card. Oh, oh, I guess one more note uh, about down but not out. You know what's messed up about this card? It's if you have cards like the gauntlets or the flat trackers. You get to just adjust the number of equipments you have before you're attacking with this card. They do give you tokens, but yeah. Yeah, but like, you know, if your opponent has like two tokens, you just like go flat trackers, like I'm at two equipment, you're at three now, and just you can it can there's so much adjustment you can do. It's just, it's it's true. It's so much more free than like how the card reads. Yeah, and it's also just so backbreaking when it does happen. I had a I had a turn with a victor deck as well. I also had red down, but not out. But um, <laughs> I had a turn where I think I, I already had mites. I think I had like two mites. So I did a red down, but not out for 10. And then I got all the tokens. And then on the following turn, I got to like, I don't even remember. I think I got to like attack for like nine into six. And it was just like, okay, <laughs> game is over. Do you know, you know what's really funny about that card? Is like, I love it when my opponent makes gold tokens. Because like, they don't disappear. It's true. Yeah, they that that's that's a liability for the for the rest of the game. So sitting on gold tokens for the whole game kind of might be detrimental. Yeah, it is a little bit scary. It's tricky because like you have these like power plays that you can do with them that are like good and get you quite a bit of value, but also yeah, you can uh... you could lose to a generic rare. But you know what? If you get rid of all your, uh, you just need to get rid of all your equipments, then you're fine. That's true. That is true. Just use up all your equipments and you don't have to think anymore. Yeah. If you, so I, I was finding that in Victor was like sometimes I was blocking with whatever the boots is stand ground. I would just block with it a second time and be like, get get this get this out of here. Like I'm not I'm not gonna get the might and the vigor, or it's like so unlikely I'm gonna get the might and the vigor. But what could happen is I could lose to down but not out. <laughs> I don't want that to happen. I've done that one with my rawhide as well. I just block with it for zero because I just needed to get rid of it just in case my opponent has that card, and I can't beat that card. <laughs> yeah, that card is. Uh... I know Darren said it was real good and a real bomb. And I was like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. And then after playing the format, I'm like, oh, like it, it really is. Like, if you get an attack with one and it's online and it hits, which it probably will, you, you often just win. Yeah, card's, card's broken. Uh, honestly, I'm kind of excited for this weekend. Well, it's still week one, and we get this information of, like, blanking my opponent's down but not outs but having our down but not outs be an actual real card because the moment people start playing around this card all the time it gets like becomes like a worse card right it's true but you know what it still blocks three broken <laughs> <laughs> okay let's wrap it up it's uh reaching about an hour all right thanks for listening hope that this episode helped you out helped you get ready for any upcoming sealed events you might have um maybe hartford or Liverpool, I believe, is the other one. And if you are going to those events, best of luck to you. Let us know um, your thoughts on the set as well as how those events go for you. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, you can do so on social media. Jay is at Uwe to Jay, and I'm at Yukili Bender. That's on Twitter. Um, or you can email us directly at onthebobble at gmail.com and send your questions and feedback uh, directly there. If you want to see our Patreon, it's patreon.com slash onthebobble. But that's going to wrap us up for this week. Good luck to all of you in your Heavy Hitters Limited. And yeah, looking forward to talking next week about how hopefully the calling went really, really well for both of us. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> uh, another another weekend of just bread. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess uh, we can wrap up the episode then. Yep. Good night. All right, good night, everyone.